For many ages, people believed Earth to be at the center of the universe and all other planets and the sun revolving around it. This was called geocentric model, meaning Earth center. In 1543, Copernicus came with a new model, which placed the sun at the center, whole planet including Earth revolving around it, in a circular orbit with a constant orbital velocity. This is called heliocentric or sun-centered model. This model was a good one than the former. But some planet moved in a complicated way that made problems for astronomers. A solution for this came after about 70 years when Kepler published his three laws of planetary motion. Kepler formed his laws by analyzing the astronomical data collected by astronomer Tycho Brahe while working as an assistant for him. One problem that Brahe gave to Kepler was to find a circular orbit for Mars. Unfortunately, Kepler couldn't find a circular orbit fitting for Mars. But an elliptical orbit with the sun at the focal point could match it very well. This led Kepler to form his first law of planetary motion, the law of orbit, which say that the orbits of planets are ellipses with the sun at one of the two focal point. Let's have a quick look at ellipse. It is a elongated circle. Did you see the center of the circle splitting into two points F1 and F2? They are the focal points or foci of our ellipse. Half of the distance between them is called the focal length, denoted by C. Mathematically, an ellipse is the set of all points in the plane in which the sum of the distance to the foci remain the same. Like the diameter for a circle, we have the major axis and minor axis for an ellipse. The line connecting two points on the ellipse and passing through the foci is called the major axis. Half of it is called semi-major axis, whose length is denoted by the letter A. A line perpendicular to it passing through the center is called the minor axis. Half of it is called semi-minor axis, denoted as B. Another important quantity is the eccentricity E, which is the ratio of the focal length to the length of the semi-major axis. Its value is something between 0 and 1. An ellipse with an eccentricity 0 is just a circle. If E is 1, we have a parabola. For our Earth, orbit is an ellipse of eccentricity 0.0167, which is nearly a circle. Copernicus theory assumed the orbital velocity remained constant. But Kepler found it is not a constant, but changing in such a way that the line joining Sun and the planet sweeps equal area in equal interval of time. For example, line joining the Sun and Mars will sweep 12.5% of total area on every 86 days. This law is called low area which in other words said dA by dt called the aerial velocity is a constant. By this law, planet move fast when it is close to the sun and slow when far away. Kepler also made an incredible observation, the square of the orbital period. That is, the time for one complete cycle around the sun is proportional to the cube of semi-major axis. This means, if we draw a graph of t square against a cube, it would be a straight line. This law is called the law of period, which he published in 1619, 10 years after the other two. Kepler found this relation from the data of six planets known those days. Today we have three more planets, but still the law is true. Kepler's laws were a milestone in astronomy. It predicted the motion of celestial bodies very well. In the next video, we will see how we can use them to track the motion of a planet.